Hello everybody, uh, welcome to this uh, video tutorial in which I will be introducing Atlas TI Mac. My name is Ricardo Contreras, I direct the training uh, division of Atlas TI. I have an email that you can use to contact me, it's training at atlasti.com and a phone number which is toll free in the US and Canada and that is 1-866-880-0231 so uh, in this more or less hour uh, I will be uh, giving you an overview of uh, the Mac version of Atlas TI I will give you an overview by demonstrating the main uh, steps or the main procedures involved in every analysis project with the software. So let me start by giving you some background information on Atlas TI. So um, Atlas TI is a software that will facilitate the qualitative analysis of your research data. You can work with data in, uh, in different um, formats. You can work with text documents, with uh, pictures, uh, audio files, video, video files, uh, geo, geo uh, documents in the near future as well as survey uh, data. Uh, also in the near future we are incorporating uh, social media uh, data, Twitter, uh, Facebook, uh, as well as, as, well as um, uh, the integration with Evernote and other, and other applications. Um, working with Atlas TI will, will allow you to, uh, let's say, reach conclusions and base them in the evidence. So uh, it facilitates this process of connecting your interpretations with what people have said. And as, as, as all software for qualitative data analysis, the Atlas TI can uh, make it easy for you to keep a good trail of the analysis process. Uh, the the the, uh, the program um, is has a very rich history for more than 20 years already. It was created in, in at the Technical University of Berlin um, uh, and uh, released commercially in 1993. Uh, our free apps for iPad as well as for Android are very useful uh, to use in the field for data collection. Uh, we have uh, our headquarters located in Berlin, Germany, and our office in the United States and, and the Americas uh, in the city of Corvallis, Oregon. When you open Atlas TI, uh, you will see this screen. On the right side, you will see the list of projects that have been created, and on the left side, uh, you see two options. One is to create a new project and the second one it is to import uh, an existing project. You use the second option under two circumstances. First, if you want to import a project that has been saved in Atlas TI 7 windows, uh, then you would click on import an Atlas TI project. And the second one is if you want to uh, move your project between computers then on the first computer you would export it you go to project export export project and then you save that file anywhere you want in the cloud in a flash drive etc and then in the second computer you would go to import an Atlas TI project and that would allow you to uh, open uh, the project that was created in another computer. Okay? It's also a, always a, a good idea uh, that you save uh, the Atlas TI, um, well not really save, but, but, but that you locate uh, the, the Atlas TI application inside of the applications folder. Okay? All right, so let's let's create a new project for this demonstration. I'm going to call it the Health Services 
star. So now, now we are in 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 the Atlas TI Mac interface. Uh, you see on top the menus, the main menus. You see below a set of drop-down menus where uh, you will find a number of different elements later on. On the left side you see the uh, navigator where you will also be able to access a number of the elements that make up every project documents, quotations, codes, memos, and networks. As I introduce this, 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 this uh, what we call in the language of Atlas TI, uh, these objects of the project, I will be uh, defining them and describing them. Uh, the first thing we do when we, uh, or after creating the project, is to add or import our documents. So to import documents you either go to the plus sign here, import, or you go to document import. I select them all and now the documents are in the project and let's take a look at them. We find them in the navigator on the left side. You double click, you see a document, you see the margin on the right side, and on the, uh, and, and on the right side, uh, beyond the margin, you see the inspector, where you will find the space where you can rename your document, where you can write a comment on that document, Wikipedia article describing the uh, uh, community health agents in Brazil. You have below information on the ownership of the project. Uh, then you go to another document, a picture, another one, and so on. Uh, here we have, first of all, we had a PDF, a picture, we have here Word documents, a video document, This unassuming medical clinic is on the front lines of healthcare delivery in Brazil. So, here we see uh, this video. Uh, Atlas TI Mac allows you to work with videos in a very flexible, flexible way. Here we have um, another Word document. This is an audio file M. P3. The video is MP4. And uh, let's see. From VOA Learning English, this is the health report. And a few PDF documents. In the future, we, we are going to be able to work with uh, geodata. And we can also work with Excel spreadsheets um, to uh, import survey data. So, survey data in Excel spreadsheets. So let's uh, let's see what else can we do here. As I opened each one of these documents, I see below uh, the tabs for the documents. So let's say that I want to keep this document on the side. I grab it, I grab the tab, and I move it until I find a purple stripe. Once the purple stripe comes up, I drop it. And now what do I see? I see a PDF document on the left side and a Word document on the right side. In the case of PDF documents, I can zoom in using the touchpad on my MacBook Pro uh, and the, also the mouse would work for that. And I can zoom in and zoom out. Uh, I can also hide the inspector just to have more space and I can hide the, uh, the well in fact that's an error of mine I meant to say that you can hide the navigator show 
and hide the navigator and uh, hide and show the inspector. So the inspector is on the right side and the navigator is on the left side. The navigator is the place where I will have access to the objects of my project. As I said earlier, the documents, the quotations, the codes, the memos, and the networks. Now, we can work in Atlas DI Mac with um, many different documents uh, on the screen, uh, not only two. In fact, there is no limitation. The, the, the size of the, of, of the screen will, will, will grow, let's say, if you keep on adding more documents. Uh, you can add documents one above the other, for example. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to get this uh, WHO article. So now I have a uh, the Wikipedia document on the left. I have my interview on the right. And I have this uh, WHO, World Health Organization, a document below. Uh, so this uh, allows for rich um, dialogue between sources of information. It facilitates comparative analysis. But we can do more than that. Let's take a look at this. This video. So what do we have now? We have the Wikipedia document on top left, the interview on the right, also on the top, the uh, other PDF document below, and the video document also below. Now, if you have <laughs> multiple screens, this then you can keep on adding documents. And so, so really a very rich uh, a dialogue between documents and and, and very rich uh, comparative analysis if that's what you want to do. All right, let's keep on uh, examining our interface. So I'm going to be closing these documents uh, so that you have more uh, uh, a better view uh, of, of what I am doing. Now let me see here, zoom in and zoom out. Now when I say zoom in and zoom out uh, using the touchpad, that can be done uh, with, with PDF documents, can be done also with uh, the picture, okay? Uh, can be done as well with the, um, uh, can be done as well with the uh, video document. So let me see the video document. Here it is. Here you see below. We are zooming in and zooming out. Um, all right. So now let me show you uh, the process of data segmentation in Atlas TI, Atlas TI Mac. So let's take a look at this at this document here. This is the, the PDF uh, document from Wikipedia. So uh, how do we segment the data? We we select a segment and we move like this. And now we can right click on it and we have the option of creating a quotation. You see this vertical line on the right side on the margin that means that a quotation has been created. Now different from other software uh, we are not forced to code this. Uh, we can create the quotation and let me open my inspector and then you may uh, you have the option of renaming it, uh, which is always a good idea because it facilitates the process of understanding what the person is saying here. Uh, renaming quotations is equivalent to what uh, the literature in qualitative analysis refers to uh, a paraphrasing. So I'm going to say, well, what is this? Uh, community health agent is the title of lay health care worker in Brazil. Uh, and I have the choice of going to the comment space of that quotation and uh, say something about this. 
So you can say this, right? Um, uh, the uh, community health agent uh, model uh, was developed uh, as part of the uh, PACS program of community health workers in 1991. So this is kind of a of, of a way of saying something about what you are reading in that quotation. Uh, and why would you do that? Well, you would do that in an effort of going deeper in the understanding of what the person is saying there. So you created a quotation. And now if I go to my inspector, and I will open it up to see it there, and if I click on the quotation icon, I see my first quotation. Let me take a look at this. A quotation inside of a pic of a picture that is embedded on that on that document. The same thing. Now I should say that uh, text quotations, their names are always given by the first uh, forty characters uh, that make up the quotation. So that's why it's always a good idea to rename them. Uh, because the four, first 40 characters, when you look at that, might not be mean, that meaningful, right? May not really tell you much. Uh, so I always opt for uh, a, a given a descriptive name to each quotation. In the case of, of graphical quotations like this one, well, there is no name and you can rename it, right? So what is this? Well, vaccination of child, right? interesting to see how this uh, vaccination is taking place in what seems to be a, a classroom. That's what it looks to me, right? Is this a school? School-based vaccination program? So you ask a question for yourself. So that is a comment. All right, and then you can keep on going in this process of segmenting your documents. Uh, if you want to postpone uh, coding for a while, that's perfectly fine. Uh, if you do not want to postpone coding, and if you want to code right away, that's also a choice. Let's see here. I will select the segment, right click, add coding, or go to the top, add coding. Uh, community health agent based on Chinese model. So now the quotation was born connected to our first code. This code was created in an inductive way. And now, what can I do? I click on the quotation, and I can rename it. And I can comment it. I click on my first code, and I can improve the, the, the naming of it if I want. I can color it, and I can define it. Define the code. Uh, so, you saw in this, this first few minutes that a quotation can be born uh, what we call free, not connected, but a quotation can also be born uh, connected right away. Now, of course, the quotation that was born free, well, can be connected later on without a problem. So, let's say, for the sake of the argument, uh, that uh, this quotation has to do with this concept here. So now I go to my navigator where I see my documents, my first three quotations, my codes, and I drag and drop this. I can drop it here or on top of the vertical uh, line on the margin. And now that quotation that was born uh, disconnected is now connected to a code, okay? All right, so now if I go to the navigator, once again, the documents, the quotations, one, two, three, and my codes. 
This code seems to be connected to two quotations. I see the number two. One, two. All right, so we're moving forward in this process. Let's now go to another document, the picture. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here with my touchpad on the Mac Book Pro. I will select this. And this is vaccination, correct? Okay, so, you know, I think I should see if I have a code for that. I don't. So why don't I do this? Why don't I code that with, with the code vaccination? Now, if I don't want to code it with that code right away, but I just want to create this free quotation, then I do that. You see? Uh, and let me do the following. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go inside of this and, and, and kind of select a subsection of that. And this is something I'm going to code right away. Vaccination. And as I did that, I will go immediately to my inspector. If I want to color this, I will do so. And if I want to define the concept vaccination, I will define it. If I want to say something about the picture itself, uh, you see, I can say, well, uh, first of all, define it, right? Child being vaccinated. And I could say, uh, nice to see how um, the, uh, uh, what seems to be the mother, right? What seems to be the mother is participating, right? In uh, in the vaccination process. Let's go now to uh, to another document. Let's take a look at this um, uh, MP3, I'm sorry, MP4, the video. So here we go, here's the video. I am, I have the cursor on the, on the, on the audio wave. Let's see here. So you see, Okay, I will start segmenting this video right here. Click, move down. So this lady is standing up, standing up, and I will close this quotation right there. So this is a video quotation. My first one, the, I, the name of it is given by its uh, duration, uh, from, well, location from 748 to 959. Uh, but now I can rename it, of course. And I will say uh, a, a clinic uh, waiting uh, room, okay? <laughs> what can I say about this? Look at so many people waiting for services, right? Okay, uh, if I conclude that this is not enough, I can very easily expand it. You see? I'm expanding this. There you go. Okay. All right. Now let's take a look at uh, another document. Let's take a look at this at this uh, Word document. I select a segment. And I have once again the choice of right clicking, creating the quotation or quotation from selection on top, or coding it, right? So let's say that I will code, oh, I'm sorry, I, I click on the wrong place. I will code it, I will say uh, cultural sensitivity. Let's say that I do not agree with how much text I selected. I make the adjustment, very easy. You place the cursor on the square at the end of the quotation or at the beginning and you click there and you will grab this 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 segment 
and then you will be expanding the quotation making it smaller whatever you want like that you see so that is resizing a quotation which is something that we do all of the time as we are doing this kind of work so the quotation has been created we can come here to define the code right and if I want to say something about the quotation itself you say it now uh, let's make a distinction very quickly between quotations and codes okay so the quotation is what the person said is the raw data uh, and the code is the concept uh, that synthesizes what the person said is kind of the translation uh, of what the person said into a concept into a label uh, you see uh, that perhaps uh, synthesizes the main idea behind what the person said. So that is a distinction that we always have to keep in mind between the quotation and the code. Now, when I said the quotation is what the person said, well, yes, but uh, what was said uh, through multiple methods of data collection in multiple different kinds of documents, pictures, audio, video, and so on. And by the way, we have not done anything with audio yet. This is the audio document. In and English, this is the health report. Okay. Chocolate. It so that's done. All right. So the process of, of, of fragmentation, or, or not fragmentation, I'm sorry, of, of, of segmentation. And now I look at my quotations. I see one. I see another one, another one. This is there, this one there, this one here, this one there. And, and notice here that we have one that is uh, within the other one. You see? The video quotation. On the front lines of healthcare delivery in Brazil. Located in Villa. Another one. And. English. Another one. This is the health report. Chocolate. All right, now uh, let's let's start working with these documents and uh, let's start coding them a little bit more. So, so now let's create a set of codes. So I'm going to go to the code manager, code, code manager, or click on codes. So we are now on this window where we see all of the codes that we have created and where we can create new codes. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to create a set of new codes. Plus, uh, let me see, I want to create one that has that will be named funding. Funding of these uh, um, community health uh, centers. Another one that I will call services. Another one that I will call culture. And uh, let me see what else funding. Uh, yes, another one called population, which is the characteristics of uh, people who receive services. Add. So these codes have been created, and now we can define them. The first one, color. So what uh, will I do? Let's let me let me let me def let me color this uh, red. Uh, also red. This three there. And let me color this one here, as well as this one here, uh, blue. So this these three have to do with services and I will color them blue. So now we have all of this uh, codes here. Now if I want to group them in, in, in one in, 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 a, in a specific way I can do that as well. So let's say all of the codes are, are, are red. Let me bring them together in a group. And uh, what will I say here? Let's say uh, model. Okay, Model of uh, services. Now, um, uh, implementation model. Let me do that differently. Implementation 
model. Okay. And let me get the ones that are blue, blue uh, here, and I will create a group called services. So there we are, and we have our codes here uh, uh, that have been grouped. Now, I haven't yet defined them all, uh, but let me do that, do something very simple. Define it, right? So I will do this here. I will copy and paste so that this definition can be can be easy. Oops, let me let me do this. Oops, there we go. Paste, paste, and uh, paste. And I need to do this in order to be able to create a few outputs in a few minutes from now. All right. So we we have defined our codes and they are all grouped together, which is very nice. Uh, now we should start working, right? So let's start with this process of, of, of coding. So here we are, and I will say, well, this is all related to funding. So I'm going to look for the code funding. I will drag and drop it. So the code has been connected to this quotation. As you know already, you have the choice of renaming your quotation, and you have to this choice of commenting your quotation. All right, so that's done there. Further, I will say that this is not only about funding, but I want to apply another code as well. And I will say that this is about foreign funding. Now, the code foreign funding does not exist. Therefore, I will create a new code for this. And I have two, there are two ways of doing that. Right clicking, add coding or add coding on top. Uh, and uh, let me do this again, add coding on top, and now write down foreign funding. So two codes connected to the same quotation, and you can connect as many codes as you want uh, to this quotation. Uh, further, uh, you can also uh, create quotations within a quotation. So what will I say here? I will say that uh, this is right click at coding. Uh, this is uh, uh, um, uh, state funding as well, as well as collaboration in funding. So this quotation is within that one. And we have more codes. Now, these two codes, these three codes that I have created uh, now, well, I should be able to define them. Define them and define them. So this is uh, something very easy, and, and you know, with the Mac version of Atlas TI, given that the inspector is right there uh, writing, defining concepts is so so simple. You just move a little bit to the right. No need to open and close other windows, uh, and also you have the choice of right away coloring this code. So why don't I color this? red, uh, this one as well, uh, and this one as well. They're all red colors. They have to do with the same idea. All right, so uh, I'm moving forward here, and let me go now to my to another document. Let me go now to another document. Let me get this one here. Oops, that's the same one, that one there. So now I will say, uh, this is funded by the County Health Department. So what I will do here is I will code it with the code funding. Uh, and let's, let me say uh, 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 state funding, although this is really county. Uh, but let's, let's talk about uh, uh, governmental funding, really. Maybe I should, I should rename that code. And in fact, that's a good a good idea, right? So I select the code on the margin, and I right away rename it governmental funding. You see how simple that is. Okay. Uh, now I will say that um, I will go to another document. Let me go to this one here. Our clinic is located, is funded, yes, by a partnership with the university in the U.S. All right, so this is all about uh, funding as well, uh, funding and foreign funding to drag and drop right there. 
Uh, now, this is also about collaboration. And let's say that I don't want the entire segment to be about collaboration, but let's say that I just want a segment of it to be about collaboration. Then I will do this here, drag and drop. All right, so now uh, let's take a look at this. I have funding connected to three quotations. Double click, one, two, three. They are three different documents. One, two, three. Let's take a look at governmental funding. Two quotations, two different documents. And foreign funding, two quotations, uh, two different documents. Now let me go back to my code manager and let's see what we have here. You know, I say to myself, let me bring together in one single group all of those that have to do with funding. So I will select them, drag and drop, and write down funding. So that's very nice because you know you can you can kind of start grouping your code so that you can focus your attention on specific conceptual domains. Let me see what I can do in terms of grouping or showing my codes grouped in different ways. Uh, let me group my codes uh, or show them grouped by code groups. These three are funding these are implementation models, these are services, and this is, this is nowhere. It has not been linked yet. Uh, I left it out, so let me bring it into funding right there. Okay? All right, let me take a look at this, uh, these codes by documents. By documents yes here it is so uh, this code is being used in this document this code is being used in this document this one and so on by document groups these two codes are being used in the documents that belong uh, to this document group uh, Brazil uh, and so on and in fact, I have to come back to document groups in a few minutes, okay? That I haven't really discussed that. Uh, all right, so we are now uh, being able to, 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 to look at our codes in different ways. Now, I can also uh, create a, an output here. I am in Excel, and now I will, I will uh, format this, format, right-click, format, alignment, wrap text, okay, and here we go. So we have our codes, uh, the colors, their names of the code. Grounded means how many quotations are connected to the code. Uh, density, we have not seen that yet. Uh, the number of groups uh, to which the code belongs and the comment, which is the definition. Now, these are very poor definitions, of course, uh, but you understand that if you had nice definitions here, uh, you can uh, create a nice table. Uh, in fact, what I would do in this case, I would maybe, maybe hide uh, a number of columns that might not be that relevant uh, for the code book, right? and have a very simple, uh, very simple table with the code name and its definition, right? And you know that you can select this, copy, and send it to a Word document and paste it. You know, why don't we do this? This is very easy to do, and I like to do this. So, new blank, and paste it, right? And there you go. And let's take a look at this in a different way, like that. So you can very quickly write down my, oops, my code book, right? And that's your code book. Now, continuing with the process of coding, let's say that I go to this uh, video uh, document uh, and I want to code this quotation that I had already created before. 
uh, let me see, I want to use one of my existing codes, services. And now services has been linked to this, uh, to this uh, quotation. Now, if I want to get a segment within this, that's perfectly fine. So let me see here like that, and I will get another one like this, right? And I will say, okay, and this sub, sub let's call it kind of a sub-segment, I'm going to code it with another code that is population. The people who receive services. So one is within the other. Let me go now to the picture. And I will code this with services as well. So I will go here and I will drag and drop. You can drag and drop on top of the of, of kind of this, this this box within the picture, or you can drag and drop on top of the uh, of the vertical bar on, on the margin. Now services is connected to this quotation. And uh, and so on. So that's not kind of anything complicated uh, with Atlas TI. The process is rather the process of coding is rather simple. Uh, so once again, what do we have about uh, services? Let me see. Double click one, which is what I'm seeing here, and two, which is this, right? Lines of healthcare delivery in Brazil. In fact, I selected On the, the wrong one. This is services. Healthcare delivery in Brazil. Okay. Located in Villa. All right. So now what I will do is I'm going to go to my quotation manager, quotation, quotation manager, or quotations here, and I will see if I can get some kind of report on, 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 my, on my quotation. So my quotations can be uh, ordered or grouped together according to a number of different conditions, let's say, uh, the document. So these three quotations, and by the way, you see the quotation below, uh, these three quotations, they are uh, part of this document community health agent. These two quotations, and you see the preview below, right? Uh, they are part of the document uh, Rio photo and so on. Let's say according to codes. These two quotations have been coded by this code this one by that one and so on. So a number of different conditions and you can you can group them and if you go here to this uh, output icon you are going to be able to create an Excel spreadsheet that will contain all of this data and what you are going to see in that spreadsheet is, is uh, tabs uh, below for each one of these uh, of these codes uh, and the tabs will be sheets right so you're going to be clicking on this sheet and you're going to see these two quotations and so on. Now I have a video uh, tutorial that is rather long, about 20 minutes, in which I explain this in, in, in more detail. And at the end I'm going to show you where to find uh, uh, those video tutorials. Uh, however, I do want to show you something here. Uh, although, that, although I explain this, uh, in detail in the video tutorial, I think it's worth uh, introducing that um, this filter function right now. So I'm going to go to where it says the filter, well, it doesn't say filter, but this is the symbol of a filter. And what do we have here? We have uh, the following, contains quotations which match, must match all, any, exactly one of the following rules. So we are about to create a query. We apply a filter to create queries. And what are the rules? Plus, what is the first rule that I want to apply? Let me see. Well, let me see, let me see all of the quotations that, um, that have the following text content health all of these five and I can create an output right away in Excel let's eliminate it 
let's now uh, say I want I want to combine uh, two conditions and if you know uh, boolean uh, queries and or exactly one not uh, and is what lies at the intersection of two subsets in other words uh, what applies to two subsets so for example you may say well I want to see uh, uh, quotations coded with code A and B that means all of the quotations that are coded with those two codes right and so quotations coded with a number of different possible rules uh, coded is just one of them you see the number the name the comment uh, the text content uh, and so on let's say it's coded with it's coded with the code funding and coded with the code with the code foreign funding these two and they are in the document or the documents that belong to a group Guatemala or that are in a single document document called uh, number three BR rural assistant let's see one only one so this is a very interesting query, right? I, I've been able to combine uh, uh, two codes uh, and then specify uh, where I want to look for this. And I said in a specific document. Let's say that you have collected data in multiple sites of data collection. Well, you could say, I want to know everything said about foreign funding, uh, but uh, only those people are interviewed in a given clinic in New York City you see and then you click on the output here and you will get an output in Excel so that is nothing nothing complicated I would say uh, so uh, my recommendation to you then is that you experiment with this okay so remember this filter option uh, you select match all any exactly one and you need to experiment with these three options to see what they really mean but all which must match all of the following rules and then you should play around with these rules and say okay what do I want to know for example all of the quotations that um, have comments yes or no comments all of these seven do not have any comments all of these seven uh, do have comments all right what else well quotations that uh, the names contains begins with ends with is contains contains the word health these four contains the word community these two and then you may say contain the word health is a little bit more uh, and is coded with the code funding these two and then you can you can keep on adding more rules and um, I don't know belongs to the following document etc 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 all right so that's very nice uh, and the if I can give you a homework right I would give you the following homework uh, go to each one of these of these objects uh, documents quotations codes memos we have not yet worked with memos and do the same thing that I did look for different ways of grouping and apply the filter and start looking for different rules and start applying rules and see what you get and then click on output and you create an output in Excel uh, so do that for each one of the objects 
All right, so let's now move on a little bit and let me incorporate the process of memo writing plus new memo. This is going to be my research diary. Oops. Diary. Here is where I will describe, I will reflect upon the process of analysis with Atlas DI. I like to think of this of these diaries as, 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 as mirrors upon which I reflect the image of my process, right? And I will say something like this. Uh, today I started by creating a set of free uh, quotations, uh, renaming them and commenting them. This allowed me to introduce myself right to the data and so on so you you, you write about that uh, now what can you do with this with these uh, memos which are now find found here well you can do a number of things you can for example uh, you can for example uh, link uh, the memos to uh, quotations so you know let's suppose that what I have here illustrates very well what I am writing about in this memo, I drag and drop, just like coding. Now the memo is connected to this particular uh, quotation. Uh, let me go to another quotation, let me go to this one here, and I will say, you know what, what I'm writing here is also illustrated by this particular a quotation so I dragged and dropped so now they are connected uh, and I know that they are connected because the memo icon is showing right next to the quotation so that's 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 uh, that's rather nice now this allows me to introduce another component of this which is the network new network now how can I call this network well initial visualization okay visualization uh, and here you you describe what you mean by that right mean by that and uh, so let me start uh, kind of uh, vis vi vis visualizing what I have so let me start by looking at one single document uh, what document will I get this one here drag and drop. Right click op, import neighbors, import the elements connected to this element, import codes. In other words, what, what am I saying uh, in this document I'm talking, or this talk, document is talking about Community uh, health agent based on Chinese model. That's what I see, right? Now, uh, what quotations do I have in this document? Import quotations. I have these three. And by the way, this has to do with community health agent based on Chinese model. Now, let's say that I do want to know I do want to see the actual quotation in my network view. View uh, quotation previews. The picture, text, and text. All right? Okay. Let me see uh, that I want to incorporate into this network view. Uh, a quotation let me get this this video quotation here drag and drop let me make it look nicer like that that's a video quotation see that this is beautiful I would say all right so this video quotation what about it let me see right click import neighbors what is this about it's about the population. Okay, good. Now, where does this come from? Let's see. Right click. Import neighbors, import documents. 
it comes from this document here, which is a video. And let me see the preview of the document. Show document preview. And you see the actual video. You see that? So this is the entire video, backwards, going forward. Well, this is here a segment within that video. Now, this uh, video has one code which is connected to this quotation, right? Now, I wonder, do I have anything else? Import neighbors, import codes. Oh, yes, I do. I have this one. Now, I also wonder, what about this, co uh, what about this uh, uh, code? Uh, what is the quotation that is uh, being coded by this code? Maybe I have more than one. Import, quotations, this one, which is, a, uh, which is a video quotation, right? As well as this one, which happens to be a picture quotation. So we are really moving forward in the process of visualizing uh, the different connections that we have made in the normal process of working with our data. Now, you can go back to the context here. Let me see this quotation in context. Right click, go to quotation, and here is the context, right? Uh, visu visualization, uh, let me see, let me see. There you go, okay? Uh, so, uh, uh, you can move back and forth between this network view and, 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 and the context. Uh, but you can do something different also. You can move this and keep it open next to the document. And you can zoom in with my touch pad. And I can open my memo. And also keep the memo open. So I see my document here. Let me let me zoom zoom out. I see my visualization my visualization. And I see my memo where I can write if I can write if I find or if I have new insights, right? By looking at my at my network views, by looking at my uh, and so on, network views. So 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 the integration of segmentation, coding, visualization and writing is so dynamic in Atlas TI and Atlas TI Mac in particular that I really like to say that the core, in my view, the core of an analysis project with Atlas TI is this, is this uh, dialogue between segmentation, visualization, writing, and coding. A uh, very dynamic uh, dialogue, and this is where you see this, right here in front of you. Uh, now, uh, let me, let me uh, go ahead with this, uh, with this network view here. Let me close this this there and uh, let me close this over over there so I have I have this um, uh, let me see here visualization right click close other tabs no I did not do it right visualization close other tabs that's it okay all right let me move this now you may wonder okay now how do I how do I uh, create an output of this well and in fact you can wonder something else before before the output you may wonder well can I uh, lay out this in a different way uh, yes you can let me select this here this one these are connected layout circular layout oops let me move this to the side so it doesn't really we have we have two networks right in this space uh, and let me see what else uh, another circular layout 
grid layout, another grid layout, and so on. Right, so you can play around with that. Now, what about uh, what about uh, uh, exporting this? Well, you can right click, uh, select, not right click. I meant to say go to edit, select, and copy, and then you go to your uh, to your Word document. And in your Word document, you simply paste, okay? And here you have your network views. Uh, alternatively, alternatively, you go to Project, Print, and uh, PDF. Open in Preview, and there you have it, okay? Now, another thing you can do uh, that I haven't really uh, shown you is that you can start creating what we call hyperlinks in Atlas DI. So let's assume here that what this person is saying in this document is contradicting what the same person is the same person saying in this other document there. I'm sorry, uh, uh, the same uh, the same document but different quotation. So that is a contradiction, right? So I am saying that uh, one, uh, one piece of the argument, let's say, is contradicting another piece of the argument. And I will say, uh, and this one here uh, is uh, expanding upon what is being said here. So the picture is expanding upon what, what is being said in this interview quotation. So we have hyperlinked. Now, there are different ways of hyperlinking, but what we mean by hy hyperlinking is linking semantically uh, codes, uh, sorry, quotations with quotations as part of an effort of describing how people, people are building their arguments. So this can be very, very, very interesting. And there are different ways of hyperlinking. Uh, and, uh, this is just one of them, and, and there is a video that I have uh, in which I explain those different ways in more detail. So you know now that you can connect semantically quotations to with quotations. But not only that, you can connect semant semantically codes with codes as well. So you know what I will do is I am going to remove this here, uh, just to clear this up a little bit, and I will move this up here. All right, so I'm gonna get more codes here, services, population, I'm gonna get all of my codes, okay? All of my codes in an effort to start building a concept map. And what I will also do is I will get rid of this, uh, of this uh, uh, quotations here and documents. By clicking on delete, I am not getting rid of them from the system, but just removing them from my from my network view because I want to have a, a, a clean network. Now, of course, I could have just created a new one, and that would have been perfectly fine. So this is uh, this is this is uh, what I'm going to do here. I'm going to make an effort to, to to create a concept map that represents my understanding. So what do we have? Funding, uh, governmental funding, foreign funding, right? Uh, also, we have collaboration on funding. So we, I say that, that governmental and foreign funding, they are, they are types of funding. They are. Collaboration on funding, I will say, is a property of funding. This is interpretation, nothing more than interpretation. I will say that uh, community HA based on Chinese model. So, uh, all right, so here I will say services, population, okay, services, what do I have? Cultural sensitivity. I have vaccination. Vaccination is a service. It's a service. Cultural sensitivity. And culture, look at that. These two are associated, right? Associated with. Let me say that this is a property of services.
what would I say about uh, the uh, population? Well, you know, for the <laughs> to make this simple for me, I'm going to remove these two codes from the network view. And now what I wanted to tell you is that we, have, we are starting to build a conceptual model, right? That represents my understanding of the data. You may want to leave this conceptual model just like that with codes connected to each other through relations, meanings. Uh, you can, Atlas TI gives you a set of meanings or relations uh, like this here. However, you can create your own. You keep on adding as many as you want, which really means that you are free to represent your understanding graphically uh, in any way you want. You are not limited in any particular way. Now, if you want to go a step beyond here and link this conceptual, uh, this concept map uh, with the evidence, you can do that, but you have to be very careful because if this code is connected to a hundred quotations, well, you're now importing 100 quotations, uh, which would be kind of dangerous, right? Uh, let me see, quotation preview, this picture. Now, you always have the choice, though, to in insert into your network views uh, quotations in a very selective way. So, foreign funding is coding quotation 3.1 and 6.1. Now, let me see if I, if I remember this, if I drag and drop, that's perfectly right, and you drag and drop. Say, you know what, I only want to insert this quotation because it's very powerful. Let's suppose that instead of 2, you had 50, right? So, you select the powerful ones, and uh, the strong ones and selectively insert them into your uh, network view. You see how simple it is to do that. There is nothing complicated there. So uh, the great dialogue, I would say, between uh, this network view and, and your quotations, and if you want to see them in context, you know now that you right-click and you go back to the context. All right. Uh, so that is a visualization. That's a visualization tool. And now uh, let me let me uh, in, the, in, the, in the few minutes that we have, I think I've spoken more than what I intended to. Uh, let me take a look at a few a few a few analysis tools. Uh, well, we have already seen the query tool analysis word cruncher. What is a word cruncher? Word cruncher is a tool that um, allows you to count. Uh, in, in, in text documents only, uh, word frequency. So I want to say, I want to count in all of these documents, well, in all, in all of them, uh, the number of words. So I will say all of this here, and I want to compare. You know what, and none of this is good for me. Right-click, add exception, remove them. So now you have a word frequency count. I want to uh, filter, or not filter, but sort uh, uh, by frequency. 318 all the way down. Uh, and you can compare now across participants, right? So uh, what words are doctors saying, what doctors, are patients, and so on. So. And, 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 and how many times are they mentioning those words. Uh, this can be exported into Excel, and in Excel you can do many more things, right? You can apply filters. And what filters can I apply? Well, let's see. Only the documents that have been commented. And the comment contains the word what is it? Let me see. Do I have anything for health? I don't remember. No, I don't see. Well, one, right? Yeah, one. There is a comment here with the word health. So, so uh, you know, I can I can do a number of different things here, 
uh, apply rules and combine rules with each other just like I showed you before so that you can really 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 pinpoint uh, the documents that you want to uh, examine uh, quantitatively uh, their word frequency count so this this we're talking here about a, a simple content analysis tool uh, code uh, co-occurrence table code document table let me do the document table first so what do we have here we have my codes code groups documents document groups all right so here we go so let's say okay how much has been said about funding uh, across these documents here let me see uh, this one this one this one this one this one and this one the numbers are not very rich but here I have a frequency what was said about governmental funding and foreign funding only uh, no, very low numbers only two uh, here you can you can filter uh, by applying those typical rules that we have already seen uh, only the codes that you know meet any of these conditions and then you can combine conditions with other conditions and when I said conditions really in the language of Atlas TI we're talking about rules right I also like to think of them as conditions uh, rules and you apply them well color you know this is nice uh, the color all of the ones are, are light blue three these are the ones right all right so uh, and then the output of this the output of this is always in Excel export table you can count the number of quotations linked to the codes across documents but you can also count the number of, wo of words that make up the quotations uh, uh, that are that makes up the quotations uh, linked to a code or a set of codes across documents so this is slightly different right the numbers are higher uh, how much are people talking about certain things across participants um, I think the number of words would give you an idea about that right how much are they saying how much are they talking about uh, and then you can export this into Excel uh, now I'm gonna show you maybe the the last an analysis tool and this tool is the code co-occurrence table okay so let's see all all what do I have here this tells me when somebody or when people are talking about uh, foreign funding how many times are they also talking about state funding twice so this this has to do with the context the second number well the context and association so when people talk about X uh, 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 how many times are they also talking about Y uh, and, and, and not only the numbers but you can also go to the actual uh, quotations you see by double clicking here double clicking there you go to the actual quotations in which these two concepts are coexisting. Uh, two numbers. The first number, the whole number, is the number of times the two codes are co-occurring with each other, and the second time uh, number is called the C coefficient that uh, uh, me, uh, refers to the intensity of the co-occurrence. But that C coefficient is mostly meaningful with large uh, samples of data. Uh, so let me just say in a few words what a co-occurrence is really. It is when two codes are coding either the same quotation or segments that uh, uh, touch each other in, in, in the quotation. So the same quotation or quotations are, are touching each other and, and export in Excel. So uh, this is what I wanted to, to give you today, an overview of Atlas TI. Maybe, maybe I went too deep. Um, 
I hope that this is okay with you, that gives you an idea of how you work with the software. Uh, very powerful to work with multiple uh, types of documents, multiple methods of data collection, uh, to do comparative analysis. Uh, if you don't want to do anything, anything complicated, that's perfectly fine. You keep it at a more of a superficial level. Uh, you, you can go as deep as you want in the description of the data uh, through the commenting tool of quotations, through memo writing, and so on. You can visualize your relations, your connections. You can visualize them uh, in a very nice way. You can bridge the gap between concepts and the evidence by inserting the actual quotations into your network views, into your concept maps, uh, and so on. So with this, I want to finalize this presentation, and I want to thank you for your, for your patience. But before I say goodbye, let, let, let me just say one thing. Uh, if you go to the Atlas TI website, atlasti.com, look for fund, uh, for training, I'm sorry, training on top, and under that, look for video tutorials. There you're going to be able to find a set of videos uh, in which I, uh, I describe uh, different procedures with the software. Uh, most of what I discussed today is uh, also uh, shown in the form of videos. So you can go to those videos for example, to go uh, to look for uh, a better, perhaps, or a more in-depth description of filters and, and the query tool uh, and many other procedures. And there you will also find uh, videos on procedures that I did not discuss today. For example, I did not say anything about, uh, about importing survey data. Well, there you're going to find a 20 minutes video in which I explain that. Uh, also, uh, automatic coding and so on. So thank you very much and goodbye.